Hey everyone, and welcome back to Premier Gal. If you're new here, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you're notified when I publish new video editing tutorials and updates every week. This week, Adobe announced the release of the public beta of Project Rush. It's a new video editing app for both desktop and mobile workflows. And no, it's not replacing Adobe Premiere Pro. It's actually doing the opposite. It's enabling another set of users. And the target audience for Rush is social media managers or marketers who have no experience with video editing and want a quick tool that will allow them to make fast videos for social media. After many tweaks, the public beta is now available. And if you're eager to try it out, you can apply to be a part of the beta by using the link in the description box below. Before we jump in, a huge shout out to Soundstripe for sponsoring this video. It offers unlimited, affordable, and no legal mumbo jumbo music for filmmakers. For just $15 per month, you can get unlimited tracks for any type of video, and you can get 10% off with my code GAL10. You can check it out with the link below. So let's go ahead and open up the current build of Rush on my Mac desktop, and I'll give you a first look at some of the video editing features and some things that could use improvement. If you want a video of the Rush iOS app, give this video a thumbs up. One great thing about Rush is that it gives you a clear picture of all the media that's on your computer, so you can easily locate and import the video, photos, or music that you need to start your first video project. So once you navigate to the video that you want to use, if you click on the full mode icon of the video, you can use a yellow handle here to select the portion of the video you want to add to your project. This is similar to selecting in and out points in Adobe Premiere Pro. Once you have the portion of the video that you want, you just hit the plus button here to add it to your project. So I've gone through and I've selected all of the video I want to show, and now I'm going to choose this music track called Feel Good Fresh that I downloaded from Soundstripe. And I've linked to a playlist of a bunch of social media pop inspired music tracks that you might like to use in your videos, and I've linked to the playlist below. Now you can give your project a name and at the bottom there are also two boxes, sync with Creative Cloud and copy media. If you check both automatically, Rush will save proxies of the video and media that you've selected and save it to your Creative Cloud in a folder called Adobe. And it will copy media to the default local folder. To change this local media folder, you just have to go to preferences and you can change the folder destination here. So now here in our first project, unlike Premiere Pro, Rush automatically creates a sequence for you and it defaults to the frame rate and resolution of your video clips. You can always change these sequence settings if you go up to the top menu and you can select sequence settings. This may be located in a different spot. This is just the beta version. There's also a quick way to change the sequence orientation from the monitor window. You can click on the ellipsis icon here to change the orientation of the sequence to landscape, which is the standard 16 by nine format, portrait mode, which is for vertical video. And I can see this being used a lot now with the announcement of Instagram TV. If you're interested in learning more about IGTV, I've linked to my blog post below. One thing that I think should be improved at this moment if we change it to vertical mode, I think it should auto scale to fit into the portrait mode. Also, I think it should be called vertical, not portrait, because nobody calls it portrait. And of course, there's also the square orientation, which is primarily used for Facebook video. So I'm going to change it back to portrait mode to make a vertical story for Instagram. While we're here from this, you can also adjust the monitor playback. For example, you can change it to low, medium, or high. And this is similar to the playback resolution some of you may be familiar with in Premiere Pro. If you change this playback to low here, it doesn't lower the quality of your video. It only lowers the playback quality, enabling for a quicker playback and quicker editing experience. You can also optimize your video clips so they perform better with your current sequence. There's also a button to loop playback if you like that. And there's also a button to make the monitor full screen. Screen. And you can also grab this middle line here between the monitor and the sequence and move it up and down to scale the monitor size. 
and increase the timeline or vice versa. So on to editing. It's really easy to put together a quick montage and rush. To zoom in and out of the sequence here, all you need to do is move this slider at the bottom to zoom in. To make a cut, just move your playhead to the location you want to make a cut and then hit the split icon here and it will cut. Then you can delete the section you don't want and it will automatically roll the two clips together. Another way to edit is just simply to grab the end or the front of a clip and roll it back to meet your playhead. You can also expand the track controls, which allow you to turn the layer on or off with the eye icon, mute the audio, or lock it in place. And when you click on a clip, you can expand it to see the audio better. You can also move the clips up and down on the timeline to create new layers. You can only have up to three audio layers, but you can have up to four video tracks. And the limitation here of layers actually makes sense for this audience. You probably for social media video only need one or two layers for photo or video and then one layer for text. But one strange thing that I noticed is that the audio is linked directly to a video that has audio. So basically if you have a video clip with audio, it doesn't have its own separate layer like the music track in our timeline. And I think that this design makes it difficult for users to de-link the audio from the video and delete the audio from the clip without deleting the whole clip. You can though roll back the audio track separately from the video to create some interesting sound bridges. Also, you can add in more media if you need to. You can find the project panel by clicking on the project box icon on the left hand menu to explore the current media that you have imported. And you can click this plus icon to add your own text, add more media, or even create a voiceover. And this was one thing that I was actually surprised by. It allows you to record your own voiceover in Rush. All you have to do is go up to preferences and make sure that you have the audio that you want to use for your audio input. And then you just need to choose the audio track you want to record to. And when it's selected red, that means that it's the track that you're recording to and then just hit record and you can begin recording. The one downside here though, is that there's no audio track mixer like in Premiere Pro, so you cannot adjust your microphone gain levels here. So now that I have my music track, I made all the edits that I want in this timeline. Let's do some customization. Let's add some transitions. If you want to add transitions in Rush, you just need to click on the transitions icon on the right. And you can see that there's only three transitions as of now to choose from. There's the cross dissolve, dip to black and dip to white. But these are the basic transitions. I think that you need to do a basic edit. I don't really use dip to black or dip to white, but I definitely use cross dissolve to begin and end my videos. One downside is that it's not clear that the cross dissolve is also meant to be used on both video and audio. You can actually use this cross dissolve to fade out your music just by simply dragging it on the end of a video clip. You can also change the duration of the transition from the edit tab, but the slider only moves to three seconds. So you need to actually go to the timeline and manually drag out the transition to extend it further. So next, what if you wanna add text or motion graphics on top of the video? When you click on the text icon here on the Right. For those of you that are familiar with Premiere Pro, this may look familiar to you because it's exactly like the Essential Graphics panel. Here, you're able to browse your existing motion graphics templates, also known as Mogerts. The same Mogerts that you have installed in Premiere Pro will also be here. And if you do not know how to install multiple Mogerts into your local templates folder here, you can watch my tutorial below. So here you can also browse free and purchase Mogerts from Adobe stock. And once you purchase them, you can keep and use them forever. If you purchase templates from other sites like Envato Market or Motionary, you can use the ellipsis button here to import motion graphics templates that you can customize in your timeline. And Rush can work with Mogerts designed in both Premiere Pro and After Effects. So I like this template here that I got from Envato Market. And what I'm going to do is move it into my timeline. And from the edit tab, I'm going to make some adjustments to it. You can customize your text for the video. And then you can use the transform tools on the right to actually move this Mogert into the position that you want. You can also make your own text from scratch using the plus button in the upper left corner to add text. And then you can build out your own custom graphic and save it as a template. 
As for color grading and color adjustments, Rush comes with a built-in color preset panel, which behaves similar to Instagram filters. They're designed so you can quickly choose a color preset to add to your video. So if I select a clip here, I can click on a preset to see if I like the effect. And if you don't like the preset, there is also an advanced settings tab just below that. And if you want to adjust the exposure, vibrancy, contrast, highlights, shadows. The only downside with this color adjustment is that you cannot select multiple clips at a time from the timeline. If I try to do that, you can see that it becomes grayed out and I cannot do that. Now this is a beta version, this could change, but that's one recommendation that I have. Now, since this is a vertical story, I want to be able to scale and move my video to fill up the entire vertical frame. So you can move the video in the position that you want, both vertically and horizontally. You can rotate it as well as scale it up to the position that you like. There is also an advanced section where you can crop the video if need be, or change the opacity, or even add some edge feathering. And just like the color section, the only big setback here is that you cannot select multiple clips at once and apply the same transform tools to multiple clips at a time. And this would be a huge time saver for vertical story filmmakers that are working in landscape format footage. As for audio, I was actually quite impressed. For example, you can select this music clip here and adjust the volume with the slider, or you can mute it if you want. And from the advanced settings, it actually took some elements from Premiere Pro's Essential Sound Panel, allowing you to assign audio types to your audio. So I can assign the music audio type here, and then I can choose to optimize the volume for the audio type. So it'll set the loudness to the best standard for music. And if you have dialogue clips in your timeline, you can make the music auto duck to the dialogue clips in the timeline. So that way you can hear them better. So now that I have my final video, I'd like to share this as one of my first videos on Instagram TV. So what we're going to do is go to the share tab and here you'll have many options for social exporting. There's already a ton of presets, but there's going to be even more. Right now, there's just Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and Vimeo, but soon they will have presets for Instagram, Snapchat, and Behance as well. You will also have the option to save it to your local drive and log in to the social platform that you want to upload directly to. One other awesome feature about Rush is that you can start your project here, and if you need to add more complexity, you can actually go to Premiere Pro, and from the start page, you can now open a Rush project in Premiere Pro. But once you open in Premiere, there's no going back to Rush. So overall, Rush is not a software for professional editors. Professional editors, of course, can use it to make social video, but it's designed for people who want to put together a few video shots, maybe overlay some text, and then export. And the good news is, that is exactly what Rush is designed for. So let me know what you think about Rush and if you think it would be a good fit for your video editing needs. And don't forget to apply to the beta so you can leave feedback to the Rush teams as well. Thanks so much for watching everyone and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if it helped you out, subscribe and hit that notification bell to keep up with all things video here on Premiere Gal. See you guys soon, bye.